Hello everyone. Today I'm going to be showing you how to take WebSocket data and ingest that into Elasticsearch. This is a pretty fun, easy project, something that I've been wanting to do for a while. So let's go ahead and jump straight into things. So the first order of business is to have a source of WebSocket data. I've chosen to use financial data and a quick Google search showed that finhub.io has free WebSocket data. If you want to follow along, then you'll need to register here. So I've already registered. So I'll just go ahead and log in here. After you register with finhub.io, you should have a screen somewhat similar to this where you have an API key. And I'm going to copy this API key and save this for later. So first things first, let's choose a directory to work in. And I'm going to open up Sublime. And we'll create a new file here and we'll call it finhub websockets.py because we're going to be doing this in Python. So we'll go ahead and put in our API key here. We'll just save it as a comment for now. Now let's hop over to finhub and let's take a look at their API documentation. Because what we really want to do, ah, here's WebSockets right here. Yeah, so we want to look at the WebSocket trading data. And we'll just copy this and head over to Sublime and paste that in. There's a few functions to find here. On message is the main function that we're going to be using. Essentially, this function defines the behavior that we have when we receive a message from the WebSocket. So this is gonna be where most of the logic goes, although we'll have a few other bits to add. On open, this is where we sub subscribe to various WebSockets. You can see in this example, it's subscribing to Apple, Amazon, Bitcoin, US dollar, and IC markets, which I'm not sure what that is. And then here, this token, this is where we are gonna put our API key. And it's already populated it with our API key, which is pretty handy. You can see how Sublime is highlighting both um, instances of the API key. So finhub.io has a pretty intelligent documentation system. They automatically populate your API key. So we're importing WebSockets, and if you don't already have that installed for Python, we'll need to go ahead and do that. And I'm using Python 3, so I'm going to do pip3 install WebSocket client. Okay, so that should work now. So we have the basics of grabbing the WebSockets now. We could go ahead and test this actually, if we wanted to. So let me save this. And then let's hop over to here and run our program here. And you can see it's working. We're getting WebSocket data, which is perfect. This is exactly what we want to see. We may for now just subscribe to one stock symbol just to make things easier. Um, but let's go ahead and get the Elasticsearch side of things going as well. So we're going to hop back over here. And I'm going to be using Elastic Cloud. If you want to set this up to run it locally, that's pretty simple. And perhaps I'll do a video on that. But for now, let's use cloud.elastic.co. Now, if you've never used Elastic Cloud, you can sign up now and get a free 14-day trial. So if we go to elastic.co products, elastic search. You can start a free trial for cloud.elastic.co. First, I'm going to show you how to get everything working in Elastic Cloud. The first thing we'll do is create a deployment. In our case, I'm just going to use the basic Elastic Stack. There's three other options here, enterprise search, observability, and security. Each of these are tuned to a different use case, but under the hood, all of these are just using the Elastic Stack. We'll go ahead and use the standard settings here. I don't mind running in Azure on the East Coast. That's fine for me. I will change this name to be FinHub WebSockets Demo. Um, we could come in here and take a look at customizing the deployment. If you're using your free cloud trial for this, it comes with eight gigabytes and two zones. So that's standard here. I'm going to go ahead and get rid of APM because I'm not going to be using that. 
and I will go ahead and create this. Now, as soon as you click create, it'll give you a username and password, which you can download. It'll create a CSV file if you download it. I'm just gonna grab the password here and I'll pop it in here as a comment. Uh, I'm gonna continue without downloading. It should only take a minute or two to create the deployment. Now, while we're waiting for it to finish deploying, let's actually hop over and take a look at Elasticsearch Python Docs. Here we go, this is exactly what we want. So first things first, we will go ahead and install the Python Elasticsearch client. And to do that, just hop over here. And I'm actually running Python 3, so that's gonna be pip3 install Elasticsearch. And we're done. Now that that's installed, let's jump down and we're going to use the cloud ID to connect to Elasticsearch. So let's copy this bit of code here, jump back into Sublime, and we will throw that right there up at the top. And we can paste this password in. And now I just need to grab the cloud ID. So let's head back over to the browser. And let's take a look here. Down here we have the Elasticsearch endpoint. Kibana endpoint and the cloud ID. So we're gonna copy the cloud ID in this case, paste it in there. That's all it takes to connect to the Elasticsearch client. And so at this point, we could start ingesting our documents. So let's head back over to the docs. So in this example usage, it's creating a doc that we can ingest and then it's ingesting it here. And we just want the ingest part. So we'll grab that. And now instead of printing the message, we will put this logic in there. Now there's several parameters that are getting passed in here. The first is the index name. This is the index inside of Elasticsearch that we're gonna put all of our data into. And I'm going to call this the WebSockets data index. Every document that's ingested gets an ID and we can specify what that ID is, but this is actually an optional parameter, and if we leave it off, then Elasticsearch will automatically assign an ID, which is the behavior that we want. Now for the body, we're just gonna use the message, and we can actually print the response just to see what's going on. Let's go ahead and run this and see if it works. And I, oh, here we go. So this looks perfect. Let's now come over to Kibana and hit launch. And this is gonna open up Kibana for us. And we can actually look at our documents that have been ingested into Elasticsearch. We'll explore on my own. Okay, so the first thing that I'm gonna do is jump down to DevTools. And we're gonna see if our new index is there. We'll do get cat indices. And we'll run that and we can see that we have an index here called WebSockets data. So that's perfect. That means our data was ingested and it automatically created the index WebSockets data for us. Now, even though we have the index and the data, we'll actually need to do one more step, which is to go to stack management, index patterns and create an index pattern for this index. And we'll name this index pattern WebSockets data star next step. We'll just go ahead and create this index pattern. And I can see here that this index pattern is looking at all of the fields inside of the data set, inside of the in index, and it's trying to identify what each one is. So it's saying data.c is a string, data.t is a number. And it's done all of this automatically. Let's jump back to FinHub and let's take a look at the response attributes that we're getting here. We're getting a message type. We have a data block, which contains a symbol, a last price, timestamp in milliseconds, volume, and a list of trade conditions. One thing to notice here is that it's grabbing the timestamp as a number instead of a date. And we could try to convert this and get Elasticsearch to recognize that this is time, but I think the easiest thing to do in this case is just to generate our own timestamp and ingest that alongside with everything else. So what I'm going to do is imp import date time 
and import JSON so that we can parse out this message here. So the first thing that we'll do is we will parse out that JSON message. So we'll do json.loadString from message. And then we will create a new JSON field called app timestamp. And we will generate a timestamp via UTC now with ISO format. And the last thing that we're going to have to do here is to pass in the message.json instead of just the message. Okay, so we'll come over here, delete this, delete this, run this. We can see it's ingesting successfully. Pop back over here and create an index pattern. You can see this time it's offering us a timestamp field, which is exactly what we want. So now you can see this has a timestamp with a date type, which is exactly what we want. That's really good. So let's go to the discover tab, open that in a new tab. And you can see that it's showing us all of the documents that we are ingesting. And this is looking really beautiful. We've got all these trades coming in. So the last thing that we can do here is create a quick visualization. We'll create a new dashboard, a new visualization. We'll choose lens and here it shows all the available fields that we have. And let's just grab volume and toss it in here. And it is showing us volume let's do the last five minutes instead of 15 minutes and take a look at that beautiful data set ingested from web sockets we can just refresh this page watch all this data coming in live cool so we've got a bunch of data coming in here let's do one last thing here Let's put in these other ticker symbols. I'm going to, I'm going to do Tesla. And let's do Elastic, ESTC. So now we're going to subscribe to four ticker symbols. And let's see how this goes. So we'll close that, restart. Let's just refresh this page. Do volume again, last five minutes, but this time let's throw another parameter on here, which is the symbol keyword. And you can see we're now comparing all of these ticker symbols in one graph. We're, we only see three because if we come in here, you can see that we only have the top three. If we set that to four, 10, then we've got everything now. Check it out. All right, well, that's it. Hopefully this tutorial was helpful, fun, easy. I will link the code, the final code in the description down below. And if you have any requests for future videos, go ahead and leave a comment and I will see you all in another video. Thank you, ciao.